fuck this my nigga chill. Man, I can't make this up, yeah, I think I lost my soul I be gone off these drugs, why you bitches doing coke? I don't got time to listen, baby, why you talking broke? Yeah, I heard she got a new nigga, that man's here, joke I can't trust like no bitch, I can't really love no more Yeah, it is what it is, baby, I just need a boat Why this bitch said I'm crazy, little bitch, you a hoe? Yeah, I gotta let you know, we got no dance for the low If a nigga tryna run off, then we let it shit What up, gang? It's your boy, Dears, and we're back with another Anger. Look, man, we gonna do a Zach Taylor conference speech like I done, um, like I done Joe Burrow. So today, man, we gonna, you know what I'm saying, get right, pause the song real quick. Look, man, we gonna get straight to the video. Like I always tell y'all, man, hit that like, comment, subscribe, and let's get to the video. Uh, Jonah, uh, dislocated kneecap, so he'll be week to week. We'll see. Yeah, hard to tell. How do you feel like Jackson played that? I thought he did a nice job, you know, is, um, especially being thrust in there. He's got to practice both sides during the week. He's practiced a lot of guard this year as well. And so I thought, um, given the opportunity that he had against a tough defensive line, I thought he, thought he held up pretty well. When did you start working him at tackle and, you know, going him over Deontay a little bit to that season? Well, he's, he's been working at tackle over the course of the season. You know, we, Frank does a good job of repping all those guys, trying to get them all ready. Again, you can never predict which side you're going to be on. And, um, that's just part of life being a, you know, a, a backup offensive lineman. And so that's one thing I like about the Bengals defense of O-line or offensive line. They find good people to change in spots. I know we, we're not pretty good on our offensive line for Buffalo right now, but we're going to find a good lineup for them. And, um, you know what I'm saying? But if you guys got to this point of the video, make sure you hit that. Slice that like button, hit that notification bell, hit the subscribe as well. You might as well hit the comment. Let's get back to the video. So he's done a good job embracing that and being ready for his opportunity. No major structural damage from Jordan. Just a kneecap. Is Alex Kappa still week to week? Still week to week, yeah. I saw him curling a towel in there with his toes, and he looked good. So that's... <laughs> that's some good... <laughs> That's some good news because then that's going to help us a lot against the Bills. And we play them at the Bills. But what do you guys think about the Bills and the Bengals? Who you think is going to win? Please let me know in the comments and give me a prediction of the score, who's going to score. I need to know, you know what I'm saying, what you guys think. Because me, I want my Bengals to win. But I see that Showtime, not Showtime, but like ESPN and the online to buy tickets. I already got Bills and the Chiefs and the championship game in ATL. How do you guys feel about that? Please let me know down in the comment section. And let's get back to the video. It seemed like that was progress when I walked in, so that was that was exciting for the room. I mean, how much would you need? I mean, I think he's played through a lot of stuff for us over the mm -hmm. playoffs. I mean, how, what do you need to see from him this week in order to feel good about that? We'll just see. It's so early in the week. I'll have to I'll have to get to the actual practice and see. So many new pieces up front. I mean, at this point in the year, what are the biggest challenges that during the week that you will work? With? Is it strictly a communication thing, or what are the biggest things you, hurdles that you face? You know, again, I, I really think Frank and Derek have done a great job of of getting us ready for these situations, where he's stressed that the, the reps aren't going to be plentiful for anybody. You know, you're going to get in that moment, and you're going to have to have to know what to do and how to communicate and so you got to put yourself in those situations mentally and our guys have really done that, that that's why Max Sharping is here he's a veteran that uh, understands these situations and that that when his number's called he probably won't have accumulated a ton of reps with the guy next to him on either side and so he's got to be ready for that he's done a good job um, same with Jackson and, and Deontay and Isaiah Prince and all these other guys that Akeem all these other guys that have had to step up he's he's got them mentally ready for those moments there's challenges. There's plenty. I won't list them all, but um, you know, there's plenty of teams that go through this, and we're just having to be one of them right now. I know the whole mantra about next man up. Is it truly plug and play, or do you have to adjust the way you play call depending on guys that are in there and backups? Well, that, that's that's really no different than game to game for us. You know, in terms of matchups from who's across from us, so um, you don't feel any different about it because that's something you're always always taking into account. Anytime yeah. we're calling a play on a hash or, or preparing for a guy that's an interior guy or an exterior guy, um, we always try to factor that in to give our guys the best opportunity and providing help where we can, where it makes sense sometimes. He gives the best advice. That's why I like Zach Taylor. He came in, rebuilt this team. 
one season didn't go too well because of Joe Burrow got hurt. But then that next following year went to the Super Bowl. And now we're already past the first round of the playoffs. So me as a Bengals fan, I'm very proud of the coaching staff. Zach Taylor, of course, our quarterback, and everybody on our team. Um, I think this off season we need to look forward in a a new corner, you know what I'm saying, get a replacement for it, Eli Apple. But other than that, we need an offensive line, you know what I'm saying, people that's going to help us with solid, giving time for Joe Burrow in the pocket. And that's my opinion for right now. After seeing these games and seeing all the sacks, like just the most sacks in the NFL right now due to our offensive line. So once if we get that fixed by the time – we play the Bills, then I think it's going to be a good game. And like I already said, I want to give prayers to DeMar Hamlin for getting well faster. You know what I'm saying? I want to see you play by next year. But uh, let's get back to the video. Sometimes it's, it's more beneficial to get four or five guys out on the route instead of helping. Um, so there, there's just uh, – that's part of game. You know, that's part of what we got to deal with starting today and, and formulating those plans. How, how important is Joe's ability to recognize things and yeah. help – account for uh, maybe having to get rid of the ball quicker. That's critical. So. Yeah, that, that's a big part of it, you know, is we have trust there that um, he can diagnose the looks quickly and, and get the ball out. There's sometimes we've got shot plays with quick answers. There's sometimes it's just quick answers across the board, but usually he's, um, again, does a great job of, of understanding the coverages and where the ball needs to go very quickly. And, um, you know, you can see everybody else understand that now, too. There was a great first play of a drive. They played Tampa 2. And we had four verticals called, and he got the ball to Mixon as quick as he's ever done. You know, and, and you can see how quick Mixon was ready for it now because they understand those looks too of when they're going to get those balls. And so something as simple as that, the ball came out of his hands quick on a play that was probably designed to go maybe even further down the field. Um, but that's just part of Joe understanding and, and playing playing quick. In a, in a, in a uh, broadcast partner interview, Joe Burrow said that he, he said he wanted to be here for his entire career. He also said that he wanted you to coach him essentially for his entire career. What's it like to kind of hear your quarterback audibly express probably what you felt? But to, to hear that, what, is that, what does that mean for you? Well, I, I think um, that speaks to the entire organization. And, and again, it's this is a place that we all love being. Um, we're in here every day interacting with ownership and personnel and the players, the equipment managers and trainers and video. And, and uh, it, it's just a big family. And, and we want our players to feel that too, like they're taken care of. Um, I like to think Joe feels that, you know. And, and again, a big part of that is um, we've got so much trust in him because he puts in the time and the work that when we're in these meetings with, with not. Yes, he's a big time dedicated uh, quarterback, man. He up, he up his offensive line when they're doing bag. Most quarterbacks would be like, man, you need to get it together. But he's a very good quarterback, man. But uh, I'm going to let this go into about seven minutes, and then I'm going to end it there. But uh, let's get back to it. Not just myself. It's really me to a much lesser extent that are in the meetings with Joe. It's more Pitch and Brian. And um, and so, again, you want that relationship where that guy feels like we, we trust him and we want his input, which we do. Um, I, I'd argue it's it's as much as anywhere in the league that, that we ask for his dialogue and his input and because – um, we want to see it like he sees it. He's the one out there, and he's got to operate. And um, he's earned that trust to, to have that dialogue. There was a lot talked about after the game about how Baltimore was able to limit you guys from, like, an explosive passing attack. Mm -hmm. Was that a result of what happened up front where you had to change what you were calling? Or is that kind of a lazy narrative to the fact that you guys lost another offensive line? It's probably why they've been a top defense the back half of the season. It's uh, They're not giving up explosives to anybody. And so it's not just us. There's a, a, a way that these guys, these games play out, you know, and they oftentimes end up being one-score games against them, whether they've won or lost. You're not going to get a lot of possessions. Um, they run the football, and it, it takes the clock down. They, they do a good job. They're smart defense. Um, and so, again, it's, it's a challenge. You've seen a lot of our drives or, or a lot of plays in the drive when we score against them, and that's just part of it. You can call the shot plays all day. And protect, and they might not be open because they do a good job rolling the coverages different ways. And um, so again, it's just and, and there's times we, we call those, you don't you don't realize it because the ball's not going down the field because it's maybe taken away. And so Joe's doing a good job of being efficient and taking underneath, and um, and that's just that's just 
part how it plays out. Well, I do like to watch the TV copy sometimes. Did you watch the TV copy of Hubbard's Fulmer? I did. Yeah. It's the All righty. I'm going to let him finish this last question, give him one more, and then I'm going to stop the video. Only play I watched on the TV copy. <laughs> and yeah. what, what stuck out? And did, anything, did you notice anything that you did when you're on the field? Yeah. You know, honestly, the reason I, I watched it was for the crowd. I, you don't you don't get to appreciate um, in the moment the crowd. And um, I, I do understand how significant that, that play is going to be in Cincinnati Bengals history. It's, uh, um, I told that to Sam after the game. I wasn't the first one to say that. But um, you understand the impact of, of that moment in a, in a divisional game, home playoff game. Um, that, that play will be remembered forever. And so I, I, I didn't get to – I was so emotional myself, screaming at all the players, good things, uh, that you don't get a chance to, to – um, appreciate the crowd and so I was kind of watching it for that and there's great copies of him running down the field you can see the crowd in the end zone reacting and and uh, the shots of the whole stadium and um, those are the things we don't we don't always you're, you're so plugged in on the headset you can't hear anything um, that it was cool to see. Do you also notice the announcer's call because Mike Tirico can be kind of reserved but on that call he reached like a different level it just sounded yeah. like that to me. I, I've been a Mike Trico fan since the 2005 Alamo Bowl when Nebraska beat Michigan 32 to 28. Um, he and Kirk Herbstreit did a great job calling that game, and uh, so I, I've always, I've always had a soft spot for Mike Trico, and, and so I, I appreciate that call maybe even more than everybody else. All righty, y'all. Give y'all a little, you know what I'm saying? Eight minutes, you know what I'm saying? That's... You feel me? We gonna end this right with a. What up, guys? Hey. In the same order. In the same order. Hey. Mm. Mm. In the same order. In the same order. Hey. 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 Alright, man. I'm gonna stop for here, man. It's your boy DJ, and like I always say, man, make sure you get the like, comment, subscribe, and like I always say, we out.